What's up, guys? You already know, it's me, Kira. Marth has been by far one of our most requested videos, so here we are with a Marth edgeguarding tutorial. Edgeguarding spaces is actually one of the most intricate parts of Marth's game. Most of what you do here is really based on where Fox or Falco is when they're able to recover. There are actually 352 different angles that Fox and Falco can take out of their up Bs. So edgeguarding is like really intricate and we'll take a few more tutorials to fully explain. But for now we can limit down those options to watch for the most common ones and expand to the rest later. There are three general places that Fox can recover from. Above the stage, horizontal to the stage, where a side B will put them right at the ledge, and below the stage. The easiest way to think about your edge guarding is to try to get Fox or Falco down below the stage, because he's usually the easiest to edge guard there. First, we'll take a look at Fox being above the stage. This is where Fox has the most amount of options, and while there are about five main options Fox can take from here, We'll just look at three for now. Both his Illusion and Firefox can be used, and his Firefox can be used at multiple angles. The first thing you want to look for is if they up B right away. In this case, the best thing to do is jump out and forward air or shield breaker them. This is pretty much a guaranteed kill as long as you start jumping early enough, so do your best to try and predict when they usually do their recovery move. Typically, a side B from this height isn't a good option because of how easy it is to react during the lag of the move, so we can focus on Firefox. However, in the case that you do not react in time, or you can't reach him with a forward air, there are three main options Fox can take. In general, we want to use non-laggy attacks, so that even if we miss, we won't be punished afterwards. The safest option to cover is a Firefox directly at us. Here we can cover this in a myriad of ways, but forward air is one of the best tools, not only because it beats the Firefox without getting hit yourself, but it also allows you to cover multiple options due to his low lag time. Take example number one here. Fox goes straight towards Marth, and Marth predicts it and uses forward air. Once the forward air has hit, Marth can either use a forward smash, if the Fox is sent low enough, or he can use the ever famous Ken combo, if Fox is sent too high. But what happens if Fox doesn't go towards Marth? Example 2 shows Fox angling his Firefox upwards. Marth again predicts a Firefox straight towards him and uses forward air, but once he notices that the attack missed, he can switch to using weak up air, up tilt, or even wave dash back forward smash to hit Fox. Example 3 shows Fox angling his recovery downwards to the ledge. This recovery is actually one of the most common because it's the riskiest option for Marth to punish. A forward air can actually cover this for certain angles, but Marth has to be as close to the edge as possible, making it a bit difficult to also cover a high angle. However, even if the fox does go to the ledge, Fox still has to fight his way back to the main stage before he's on even footing again, a feat not easily accomplished against Marth. So we can conclude here that forward air is a safe, reliable option to cover everything Fox can do from that standpoint. Here is a second option. We use forward smash to show a different side of things. Forward smash is a laggy move, but if used in conjunction with strong movement, it can be a good finisher at high percents where a forward air does not lead to a direct follow up. Here Fox is using his Firefox horizontally again. We could use a forward smash here to interrupt it and kill him, but if we miss, he easily gets back onto the stage and has a chance to attack us too. So how do we solve this? There's two main ways here. The first one is to walk all the way to the edge. Using forward smash here can cover both a horizontal angle and a downwards angle. And if Fox decides to go upwards, Marth has enough time to grab or up tilt on the other side. It may not quite lead to a guaranteed kill, but at least it does give you a second chance. The second is to wave dash back. Here Marth gives up the downwards angle Firefox, which again, keeps you in an advantageous position, but if Fox goes right towards him, Marth can forward smash to cover it. However, if Fox goes high, he can pull backwards to avoid the forward smash. Here lies one of the keys of edge guarding. Pay really close attention to this idea, because it is not only applied just to edge guarding, but to pretty much all parts of the game. Here are the facts. Wave dash back covers a Firefox towards Marth. 
but if you wave dash back and Fox goes high, the Fox sees that Martha's backed up and reacts by pulling back towards the ledge. To cover this, immediately after wave dash back, Marth begins to walk forward to cover Fox falling back. However, if Marth begins walking immediately and Fox goes straight at him, he will barely get caught by the attack. So this is the key. The Marth player needs to react to the direction Fox goes in while he's executing the wave dash. If Fox goes straight at him, forward smash. If Fox goes up, start walking forward. The wave dash in this way can cover both options if you react in time and choose the correct secondary action. One last way to edgeguard here would be to cover the downwards angle first using a down tilt. Down tilt sticks out far past the ledge and has very low lag time, so you can turn around and up tilt or grab, or even tip or forward smash the opposite direction if Fox goes past you. The last option we need to look for is an illusion onto the platform. Again, the best thing to do here would be to go out and interrupt Fox before his illusion even gets going. But if this is impossible, we can simply position ourselves in a good spot to cover all the options. From here, Marth can short hop back and up air Fox if he illusions onto the platform. If Fox decides to up B, he can revert to using forward air or forward smash again like the early examples. He can also preemptively do an up air, expecting Fox to side B, and if Fox instead charges up B, he can wave dash forward to jabs or forward tilt to interrupt it. Or even short hop instant fair to a combo, or instant fair to fast fall to cover anything going above, as you can see here. I realize that there are tons of moves and options to think about here, so don't be too overwhelmed. Just try practicing one at a time until you feel like you've mastered using that one. Now, do not I repeat, do not think that you were born with slow reactions if you can't do this at first. That is absolutely never the case, and people say this all the time. Reaction time is improved through practice, muscle memory, and previous expectations. All pros are able to move faster not only because they have seen these situations hundreds of times, but also because their fingers move automatically, doing actions they've practiced thousands of times, and because they can predict with more accuracy and confidence than the average player that these certain situations will happen. This is a huge topic that we can discuss at a later time, but just know that literally everybody can accomplish this type of reaction as long as you put in the work. There are tons of pros and cons to each type of edgeguarding style, and also there are a lot we haven't covered here yet. So just work on your own and see what works for you. Once Fox and Falco are hit below the stage, edgeguarding becomes like a hundred times simpler, and we'll show you how this works in part two. Thanks for watching.